We'll tell you about a winner later in the program. But now let's have some rest with our stars, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. All right, all right, Costello. Come on out here. Say, where did you get that lump on your head? I got it last night. I was playing piggyback with my little three-year-old nephew, Tony. Oh, now, wait a minute. How could you get a lump on your head playing piggyback with a little three-year-old boy? I fell off his back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're always getting into trouble and getting lumps on your head. Oh, that's nothing. I almost had my nose broken in three places. Now, what did you do about it? I'm staying out of those three places. <laughs> you please talk, Sands. How's your Uncle Mike getting along I know he's uh, going to the doctor every day. What's the matter with him? Well, Uncle Mike is kind of nutty. You know, he used to go around the house thinking he was a St. Bernard dog. Is that so? Yeah, but he's much better now. He is? Yeah, now he only thinks he's a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> well, never mind that. You know, I've been looking for you all week. I telephoned your house Monday night, and they told me that you were taking a bear. Monday night? Yeah. Well, brother, did you have the wrong number? <laughs> Forget about that. It's bad enough I can't find you all week. And uh, we, uh, we're late getting here today, work. Uh, yeah, what's yeah. your excuse this time? Well, there was a terrible heavy fog in the valley this morning. I got up, washed, dressed, and came down here to the studio, and then I had to go home again. Now, now wait a minute. The fog wasn't that thick. Oh, no. When I got here, I wiped the fog off my face, and it wasn't me at all. I had washed and dressed my brother. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been really foggy. Oh, but we kids in the valley have a lot of fun when the fog gets thick. Yesterday I painted a train engine on my Aunt May's reading glass. And what happened? She hid in the alley all day waiting for the super chief to go by. <laughs> Costello, how could you be so stupid? Ah, the dumber you are, the easier it is. Oh. And now the scene starts. The Abbott and Costello kid show, 10 year old Anna May Slaughter. you like to sing for us today? Johnny, I'd like to sing two beautiful ballads. I'll be home for Christmas and white. Well, go ahead and sing them, Johnny. Uh, go ahead, honey. Hey, hey, Miss 
Thanks, Johnny. Hi, kids. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Hello, Lillian. Welcome to our kids' show. How do you like our swell bunch of kids? Swell is right. But that kid over there... Looks like he swelled up a little too much. <laughs> think I'll stick a pin in him and let the air out. Now, just a second, Miss Roth. Before you stick any pins in me, you better find out who's boss around here. Costello, I'm the boss around here. Well, what am I? You're nothing. Boy, you've got a lousy job. What do you mean? You're boss over nothing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, now, boss. Don't fight. I came here to sing for the kid. What kind of music have you got to accompany me? Well, Lillian, now. We've only got an organ. Well, I, I should have some wind instrument. Do you suppose you could get a tuba player for me? A what? A tuba. Could you get me a tuba? Oh, sure. I'll run up to the drugstore and get you one. No, oh, wait a minute. What kind of a tuba could you get from the drugstore? A tuba toothpaste. I... <laughs> Uh, pay no attention to him, Lillian. If you like, uh, I'll sing with you. Would you like to hear my voice? Yes, Mr. Abbott. Let's hear you. Uh, pardon me. <coughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you blow out a tube here in a joint. Costello, does he always sing like that? He's been singing like that for ten years, and he ain't made an eight yet. I... <laughs> How's it like to hear me sing, Lillian? Okay, what do you say? I'll sing a little song I sang when I went to school. It's called... A pineapple for the teacher. You mean an apple for the teacher. I mean a pineapple for the teacher. I went to reform school. <laughs> you know, William, I wish my wife was here. She could sing with you. My wife is a mess of soprano. I knew she was a mess of something. I... <laughs> Lillian, I could really sing, and I'd practice up to sing with you. I was singing in your dressing room before you came in this morning. Is that what that noise was in my room? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish you'd have told me sooner. I spent 15 minutes oiling the door. <laughs> Costello, why don't, you, why don't you just run the scales for Lillian now? And maybe uh, she'll let you sing with it. Okay, here I go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, do. Costello, that... Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You left out the T. I can't help it. When I get to a high note, my voice sinks. You left out the T again. Lillian. <laughs> Lillian, what can Costello do to improve his voice? Well, I have an idea. Costello, why don't you stand back about 50 feet from the microphone when you sing? Mm-hmm. If I do that, nobody will hear me. That's the idea. <laughs> Mr. Abbott, uh, let's hear you sing again. Oh, thanks. I knew you'd appreciate that. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Peter. You, you know, by the way, I had my uh, voice cultivated. You should have had a plowed under. I... <laughs> As a rule, I only sing while I'm shaving. Abbott, you should grow a beard. <laughs> Why, enough of this nonsense, Costello. Lillian, what about you singing a song for the kids right now? Okay. You know, kids, I was only a kid myself when I started in show business. Five, to be exact. I'll do a little medley of songs I introduced in the past for my first big Broadway production at the tender age of sweet 16. Ain't she sweet? See you coming down the street. I ask you very confidentially. Ain't she sweet? And then for my first motion picture, short subject. I'm in love with you, honey. Loved you from the start, honey. Everything could be so sunny. There is another time with you. I'm thinking of those friends. And then, for the first time on the Paul Whiten radio show. So you met someone who set you back on your heels. Goody, goody. You met someone and now you know how it feels. Goody, goody. You gave her your heart to you, just like I gave mine to you. And she broke it in little pieces. Now, how do you do? So you lie awake just singing the blues all night. Goody, goody. And you think that love's the barrel of dynamite. Hooray and hallelujah. You had it come to you. Goody, goody for her. Goody, goody for her. 
And I hope you're satisfied, you rascals, you. Ho, 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 ho. I hope you're satisfied, you rascals. Thanks a lot, Lillian Roth, for coming over today to entertain our kitty audience. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Abbott, and I'd like to say a few words of my own to your kid listeners. Kid, Lou Costello, and Bud Abbott are two of the best friends that kid ever had. I know. I've seen the grand work Abbott and Costello are doing to fight juvenile delinquency at the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation. So keep listening to your Uncle Bud and your Uncle Lou kids and you won't go wrong. So long, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for the kind words, Lily Law, and good luck to you because you're a swell girl. And now for our quiz game, Bubble or Nothing. Each kid in the audience gets a piece of Fleer's Double Bubble Gum. And we have ten kids on the stage chosen from the studio audience. They're all chewing Fleer's Double Bubble Gum. The kid who blows the biggest bubble in ten seconds gets a special prize. Every kid who blows a bubble gets to be a contestant. Those who don't blow bubbles get nothing. So let's go with bubble or nothing. Well, the contestants are chewing their clear's double bubble gum. On the count of three, the gong will ring, and they will start blowing. Are you ready, kids? One, two, three. Now go ahead, blow out a big bubble. Blow out a big bubble with a big prize. Go ahead. Hey, hey, look at here. Look at here. Whoa, look at that bubble. Well, that is it. That is it. Well, I don't want to tell you, that's, that's the biggest bubble we've had on this show in many, many a time. Whoa. Give me that little boy and girl over here. Give me that, give me that boy first. Give me that boy over here. Brother, that is the biggest bubble I ever seen blown on this here show. What's your name? Bill Mountner. How old are you, Bill? Ten. Ten years old. Well, you know what you get for blowing that bubble? You get a gorgeous radio from Mr. Layton from the Radio Burbank Appliance Company in Burbank, California. That's a gift for you. And over here, we have a little girl over here, sweetheart. You know what you get over here for blowing? You blew a wonderful bubble, too. What's your name? Little Joy. Who? Little Joy Hefner. Little Joy Hefner? Okay, Little Joy. You get from Joni of Hollywood, we have for you this beautiful artist apron with a complete set of watercolors, crayons, modeling clay, and everything to make you a real artist. And here is also a whole case of delicious vacuum tin circus peanuts. And after the show, each kid in the audience will get a big bag of circus peanuts, a gift from you to them. And here we go. We've got some more. We have here a full box of yippee polka dot suckers for you and also a sucker for each kid in the audience. That means a lollipop for everybody. Yay! Hey, now we have the first contestant over here. Very pretty little girl. Come out over here, sweetheart. I'm going to ask you your name right away. What's your name? Be- Beverly what? Beverly Hope Coyle. Did you, take the, did you take the bubble gum out of your mouth yet? Oh, you got it out? And your name is Beverly Hope Gordon? Gordon. Oh, Gordon? That's a very pretty name. How old are you, Beverly? Five. You're five years old. You talk like a great big grown-up girl. Come on, close it up a little bit. Yes, I want to see your beautiful eyes. Have you got any boyfriends? Yes. How many? Two. You got two and you're only five? Mm-hmm. Do you go to Macambo at any time with those boys? That's a nightclub. You don't go. What do you drink when you go? Nothing. Nothing at all. Mm-hmm. You stay sober, don't you? Does your boyfriends drink? Hmm? Yeah. What do they drink? Hmm? Do they mix it? They really have a wing ding, don't they? Well, Beverly, here's your question. What do you blow with bubble gum? Bubblegum. You're right. That's right. right. Bubble gum. Yeah. Now, Beverly, you blow with a He has a wonderful gift for you. Oh, you have a whole box of famous chocolate milk and bars made by the Hollywood Candy Company. And every month for the next year, we will send you another box of these swell bars. And wait a minute. After the show, each kid in the audience will get us a chocolate milkshake bar. We're going to double up this time, Lou. We also have for you one of the sensational new BD ballpoint pens, the world's largest selling pen. That's the number two over here. In fact, he's so small he has his brother with him as a guide or a guardian. What's your name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, and your last name, Jeffrey? Uh-huh. What's your last name, Jeffrey? Jeffrey Ray. Oh, how old are you? Three. You're three years old. Uh-huh. Well, if you ain't the cutest little color boy I've seen in a long time, I'll bet you I have. Ain't you? Mm-hmm. I think you are. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Jeffrey, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Where do you live? 
down the second street. On second street? Mm-hmm. And and who who was here at the show today with you? Show sure, today down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And today at the show, who's with you besides your brother? Mm-hmm. Mama. Uh huh. You don't want her to hear that, huh? Uh huh. What's your mama's name? I want a puppy. No. You want a puppy? No, Jack. No. Oh, he has a puppy? Yeah. Oh, now wait, I'm going to talk to you. Wait, I talk to your bodyguard, your brother. Wait a minute. How old are you? I'm a nine. And he has a puppy, huh? Yeah. So he wouldn't want another one, would he? No. So we'll let some other little boy or girl that doesn't have, don't have a puppy, we'll let them win it, huh? Yeah. But we'll, Jeffrey, we're going to give you a nice prize anyway. Now, here's your question. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Where do you wear a near ring? Where do you wear an earring? Say, uh, in my ear. In my ear. That's right, right Jim. That's right. Right over Mr. Rabbit, Jeff. He's going to give you a nice big prize. If you win two pairs of Ranch Champ blue jeans and a Ranch Champ cowboy hat from the Howard Orange Supply Company of Los Angeles. Take them on, son. Take them home with you. <laughs> Well, here's the next success over here. Nice little girl, too. What's your name? Marilyn Gilmore. Marilyn Gilmore. Well, Marilyn, how old are you? Eight. Eight? What direction does the north wind come from? That's a hard one, but I know you can get it. What direction does the north wind come from? South? North. North, north is right. right. You're right. You're right. right. You're right. Come on. And you win this pedigreed ideal cocker spaniel puppy and a six month supply of Wilson's ideal dog food. Ideal feed your dog in seven ways, and here is your ideal puppy. <laughs> well, here's the next contestant over here, another little cowboy. Bobby Smith. Bobby Smith, how old are you, Bobby? Seven. Seven years old, where do you live? 132 North Kenmore. That's good. Have you any boyfriends on the block? Yes. Anybody want to say hello to? No. You don't talk to them? Yes. Maybe you got a girlfriend on the block you'd like to say hello to. There aren't very many. There are not very many girls? You mean not, you haven't got very many or there are not very many on the block? There are not very many on the block. How come? With a handsome guy like you, I think all the girls would like to live around you. Have you got any girlfriends? No. None at all? Do you have any brothers and sisters? One sister. One sister. How old is she? Sixteen. Sixteen? Well, gee, how old are you? Seven. Seven. She's sixteen. Mm-hmm. Why the wait, wasn't it? Yeah. Where's mother? Is she with him? Yes. Where's she sitting? Hmm? Out there. She's sitting out there? She'd have to be sitting out there, wouldn't she? <laughs> How's daddy? Is he working? No. What's she doing? Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask that. Well, anyway, here, here. That, that's... Well, we'll, we'll all say a nice prayer anyway for daddy, huh? Okay. Now, here's your question. Are you good at figures? Yes. Okay. Now, listen closely. If I gave you ten ice cream cones, and Abbott gave you six more ice cream cones, and then I gave you twenty Cokes, and Abbott then gave you four more ice cream cones, what would you have? A party. Party. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to give one of those rings, Lou? I have it. For, for hitting a question like that, I got to give, I got to give this boy, I got to give One of those sterling silver rings. Was it Bobby, wasn't it? Bobby? Well, Bobby, I got a sterling silver ring here from the House of Schrager's, from Norman Schrager, from Mr. Schrager to you. And it's a sterling silver ring, and, and we're going to have your name, Bobby, put on it, so, and the picture, so, and, and that's for you, okay? Well, wait, we got something else. Now, we got something. Now, turn right around, right about. Peace! Right over here, Bobby, wait, come wait, on. Wait, wait, wait. We're soldiers. Right face! Right face! Right face. Yes, there is his right face. Look at the one. That's your boy scout. Okay, when I say right face, you make a right turn. Now, let's go. Right face. I'm proud about face. Forward, march. Forward, march. Forward, over the head. Oh, oh, oh. Now hold it. Don't run through the stand. From Cabot's Shoe Stores in Beverly Hills in Englewood, we have for you this beautiful pair of Edwards shoes. That's yours. Now we have a very sweet little girl over here. And what's your name, dear? Sherry. Sherry, and your last name? Nagawa. Sherry Nagawa. What's your nationality, Sherry? What? What's your nationality? Are you a Japanese? Say, yes, I'm a Japanese. Yes, I'm a Japanese. 
Well, that's good, and we're very proud to have you. Now, look, Sherry. I got it. Certainly we are. Let's show sure we're very proud. Isn't that nice when everybody loves you like that, Sherry? Huh? You bet your life it is. Now, look, Sherry, here's your question. If you belonged to a sewing circle, what would you be doing most of the time? Me? If you belong to the sewing circle, what would you be doing most of the time? Hmm? The sewing? Yeah. Well, say sewing. 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 You make me. I make you laugh. Look, Derek, did you ever see Abbott and Costello in pictures? <laughs> How old are you? Eight. Eight years old. Do you hear us on the radio? Yes. Do you laugh when you hear us? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, run off the stage in a minute. Now look, Derek. I'll get a Derek to do it. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Derek, when you go to a moving picture and you see a very funny picture, how do you laugh? Same as I just finished. Yeah. <laughs> when you see something real funny, how do you laugh? I know. No, let me hear you laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> when you see something that's not too funny, how do you laugh? I don't laugh. You just... <laughs> don't you like that a little bit? No. All right. Derek, <laughs> there you are, pal. Hey, by the way, if you get a chance, you go see Abbott and Costello and Frankenstein. I think you'll like it. I think you like it. I'd like to have you see that as the first picture of Abbott and Costello that you ever saw. So will you go see it? Huh? Okay. And if that scares you, go see Mexican Hayride. That's coming out next. Now look, what kind of an animal is used to make fried chicken? Chicken. Chicken is right. This play school hammer nail kit. A complete home construction kit with a hammer, bench, seat, and all of the place and tools for America's favorite toy. Kids, we are happy to announce that each week we're sending a thousand pieces of Flair's Double Bubble Gum to the kids of some orphanage or home. This week, the Flair's Double Bubble Gum goes to the California Junior Republic at Chino, California. Well, kids, how did you like bubble or nothing? We present the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Award. This award is given each week to a boy or girl for a civic good deed. You, the listeners, select this winner by writing a letter to Abbott and Costello, Hollywood, California, telling of a good deed or act of heroism done by some boy or girl. The letters are judged by our board of directors, and the winner receives many valuable prizes. The winner of this week's award is 16-year-old William Hodges of Sylvania, Georgia. <laughs> Well, kids, this is truly a story of great bravery on the part of a 60-year-old boy in the face of a terrible tragedy. A few weeks ago on a farm near Sylvania, Georgia, Farmer Leroy Hodges was about to start a fire in his fireplace. Edward, Edward, come here. Here I am, Dad. What would you want? I can't get this fire going. Get me that candy. Dad. Now, I'll just pour a little of this over the wood, and I'll have this thing going in a minute. Five-gallon can of kerosene exploded, scattering fire all over the room. The entire house was soon blazing. Mr. Hodges was knocked unconscious by the explosion. 
He, Edward, his 13-year-old son, and Harry, his 3-year-old son, as well as his wife, Mrs. Hodges, were all trapped in the blazing house. Hey, the house is on fire. Dad! Mom, come on, we got to get out of here. The house is on fire. Where is everybody? Where are the kids? Please, somebody say something. Where are you? <laughs> In here, William! In here! I'm coming in and get you! William Hodges managed to drag his two brothers from the burning building. Then he went back for his mother and brought her out. By that time, the fire had reached such proportions that he was unable to get his dad out. His father lost his life. William's two younger brothers passed away a few days later in a hospital. But his mother is still alive. That's that's a terrible tragedy, Lou. Terrible. Fires are always a tragedy, especially when they happen on a farm. Fires are bad things anywhere. Kids, please listen, Uncle Lou. Be careful of fires. Go through your house right now and make sure that anything and everything that could cause a fire is put in its proper place. And above all, don't play with matches. Don't start bonfires unless you're absolutely sure that you've got a way of putting them out if they do get out of control. I sincerely hope that this story of William Hodges will remain in your memory as an example of what a fire can do. And William Hodges, I know you're listening in and I want you to know that you have the sincerest sympathy of Mr. Abbott and myself and of the kids all over the world who have heard of your great tragedy. And for your great bravery, we are truly, truly proud of you. How do you kids feel about William Hodges? Don't you think he's about the bravest kid in the world? Okay, Johnny, make the award. To William Hodges goes this week's Lou Costello Junior Youth Foundation Award. And here are your prizes. First, a beautiful Gruen wristwatch. This is a solid gold 17 jewel Gruen, engraved from Bud and Lowe. Next, a beautiful alligator leather personal radio from David's Industrial Gloves of Springfield, Ohio. Now you can have your radio with you wherever you go. From the Kitty Jewelry Stores of America, a solid gold signet ring with your initials on it. And a super streamlined airflow Monarch bicycle. This is a Monarch Super Deluxe, America's most beautiful bicycle. And a complete set of medals of all the presidents of the United States in a beautiful leatherette case. Presented by one of America's leading coin concerns, the numismatic gallery of Beverly Hills. For Moto Day, we have for your mother a complete Moto Day Monday through Friday wardrobe. Five lovely Moto Day frocks, one for each day in the week. And another gift from you to your mother, the sensational new Kirby, the nearest thing to push button hospital. And another gift for your mother, a complete service for Ada Franciscan wear made by Gladdy McBean and Company. I know all kids help their mothers with the dishes, and to make the job easier for you, we're sending you a Her Majesty dishwasher. This Her Majesty dishwasher will wash your dishes in two minutes, and it dries them, too. Hey, William Hodges, I know you'd like to start a foundation of your own right around your farm place. If you have any children there, we're sending you a complete, oh, loads of play school toys for you to give out to any child that you want to give them to. And William Hodges... This week goes the foundation, the Junior Youth Foundation Trophy for Good Citizenship. And this is a beautifully engraved gold trophy made by Dodge Incorporated, largest manufacturer of trophies in the world. Yeah. And, and William Hodges, our good friend, Mr. J.B. Fuqua of radio station WG.